Hey, how's it going? It's Devin with Devin's Card House here today to talk a little bit about Ravensburger, Ravensburger, Lorcana, an interview with the CEO, Stefan Matty, uh, that they did with a, a website called ICV2. Uh, kind of gives us a little more insight into the reprints and what exactly the company is thinking in regards to reprinting the first chapter. I know um, I definitely got this wrong from the beginning. I was thinking, and I know a lot of other people online were thinking the same thing, with how Ravensburger was communicating with the community that reprints would be made available so that these boxes would be able to hit MSRP for more than just a couple weeks. <laughs> um, there was the initial uh, pre-release that happened that you could get before the, actually Locana came out, you could get boxes for around 150 Of course, that didn't last for very long, and then boxes spiked up to like $400. Then we had that second wave, the new reprint that came out. Boxes got down to MSRP. They hit $150 for maybe it felt like two weeks, maybe a month, um, around that period of time, two weeks to a month, something like that, and then have been slowly creeping up. So now we have boxes around 230. The troves are now $300. Um, you can get a brick of the starter decks for around 160 bucks. So those are still, I, th I think, okay. You can get them for a ba basically starter, uh, starter decks you can get for under 20 bucks, which is still pretty good uh, for starter decks. But I was thinking, I know a lot of other people, that Ravensburger was going to be hot on the reprints, making sure that we got boxes for MSRP. But it doesn't seem like the CEO and or uh, the company is concerned with single with uh, box prices as long as the single prices of the cards are maintaining a good value. So right here, you can see that, uh, well, if you look at on um, TCG Player, you can see the top cards. Besides the Enchanteds, I'm not talking about the Enchanteds here, but um, if you look at the top cards, you know, uh, they're around like 30 bucks there's like three of them let me look real quick so um so maleficent monstrous dragon is 35 bucks rapunzel 32 bell th uh, 23 so only a couple cards up there in uh, above 20 dollars and then uh, everything under that it gets down to 10 pretty quick you know a brave a whole new world is 13 maui is 10 hades 10 uh and then it goes lower than uh, under that you know tink it's crazy seeing these cards tinkerbell was like a 25 five dollar card now she's eight uh, eight bucks mickey mouse brave little taylor you know uh, 5 30 it's crazy seeing um what was it uh lilo lilo was like 20 bucks and now lilo is a dollar 25 so these single prices, if you're looking at it, uh, having a, just a few cards that are above $20, I think is a healthy for single prices. But when it comes to the sealed prices and the sealed, that's where we're seeing that out of whack. And so I think Ravensburger, Ravensburger is kind of like having to uh, juggle a weird thing right here being like, okay, do we reprint more boxes and risk tanking our singles even more than what they are? Uh, but, but singles seem to be in a healthy spot. So how about we just leave it there until singles are out uh, out of the picture so um let's go, uh, just read what uh, uh stefan or St stefan i think it's stefan uh what he said here um in the interview and maybe we can get a good uh, idea so the first question was there after uh, after market prices surges that put the game out of reach for many players as it first launched prices have calmed down as more supply reached the market do you f feel you've reached the proper equilibrium between the too little and too much product in the marketplace uh, price, the marketplace. Uh, and then he responds with this. Aftermarket prices are subject to many dynamics. And while they are hard to ignore fully, they're not primary indicators behind decision making. They do help us a bit in the early days of launch to understand how well we are meeting market demand. Our research indicates that there are currently enough product out there for existing and new players to get their hands on, which means we're getting the supply demand equilibrium just right. And I totally agree when it comes to uh, Rise of the Floodborne or Into the Inklands. Uh, having a few months or at least where we're seeing product um, uh, hover around one t uh, 110, 120, which is what I was looking for for those first chapter boxes. Um, I think that is healthy for those. And I, I think it's just giving people enough time to get in and get the product they need for these new sets. Although, though, when it comes to the first chapter, I will say this selfishly, 
I, I really want them to reprint it. I want more boxes. I want them to be cheaper. I want them to be able to be had by everyone, at least for a longer period than we've already received. Uh, of course, um, you know, like I, I'm sure everyone on here, you know, you knew and you were going to get it and you, you got yours and I'm happy that you did that. But uh, for everyone else who didn't get it, it would be nice to have a little more time. I think for me, um, at least a year of product for a good card game like this, if you're on the top end, like magic level, it would be nice to have at least a year window where people can get the product and then we see that slowly gradual rise. That's what I like to see. These crazy, hey, you got two weeks to get the product and then uh, and then you're going to be paying, uh, you know, I guess 75% more. That's kind of crazy to me. And we did not get enough time at MSRP for a first chapter, in my opinion. That being said, the single prices, like I said, are in, seem to be in a healthy place. So it is kind of uh, a weird thing there. I selfishly would like more boxes for myself and I would like to give Ravensburger, Ravensburger my money if they would do that. But um, if they feel fine with just looking at singles, then I, that actually makes a lot of sense. So next question here, you ship multiple waves of the initial releases. What are your expectations for multiple waves or reprints of Disney Lurkana products going forward? answer we did reprint the first chapter once it was not an easy endeavor but we are very happy that we were able to make that happen as fast as we did to meet player interest we watch we listen we act our north star is is and always will be the Lorcana fan and making sure disney Lorcana tcg is the best game it can be all reprinting decisions will continue to be made with that in mind and as of right now we're at a good equilibrium so what they're saying right now is it doesn't seem like there's a, a full size reprint that we're going to be expecting. Now, I know uh, if you've been paying attention like I have, there has been tricklings of first chapter actually hitting the Disney store, Amazon, Walmart uh, for a very limited. It's it's like we're back to the beginning when this shit first released and you had to like race. It was racing. I, and that's the thing with this uh, first chapter. It's always been a race. It's always been a, a drag out fight to get these boxes at msrp there has never been a chill time where you can just pick them up and get them uh you just chill i mean but maybe for those two weeks right there but that has not happened since then and I, i'm curious like i if there was another uh, uh flood of product or another reprint would everyone just pick those boxes up and it's going to be the same story i don't know because now people like me who are like hey i was waiting for this to get down to below msrp or msrp it never happened uh, there's people like me who need who want and need to get the boxes so it would be nice if they did that but is it just all going to be that rush again and then those boxes will be gone so uh just from these couple questions in the interview the whole interview is great uh, if you want to check it out it's like i said it's on icv2 uh, but those these are the couple questions that kind of dealt with reprints and stuff like that so like I said, it seems like uh, it's kind of a mixed message from the beginning. It was, we want these boxes to hit MSRP. And then now it's, hey, we're cool with these boxes sitting at, uh, around over $200 as long as players can get their hands on the single cards. At least is that is what I'm interpreting it to mean. As long as we have a healthy singles market, then uh, they're not so, uh, they don't care so much about the sealed product, which uh, for me is a bummer. It's a bummer. I want you to reprint, reprint the product. And I know every, I get tons of comments on here when I make these videos of uh, people who uh, just want it to be a one and done or uh, or whatever. But I just don't, yeah, I think there's more room for more product out there. And so I hope we get it. It would be nice to get some more product. If not, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and I'm gonna have to buy at these higher prices. And that sucks because I, I need to have at least a couple boxes um, going forward. And, you know, I should have done it. But just like I said, I was holding off on buying just because of, like I said, the kind of how they were communicating with the community. And I feel not misled, but maybe the demand was so high. Maybe they thought they had printed enough, but um, they they obviously did not. So uh, it's very interesting. And so I, I think we have to go forward with this new information, knowing that um, if we see those single prices start to rise and get to a crazy place, maybe that will be the trigger that makes Ravensburger, uh, you know, pull it again and give us a new big reprint of the first chapter. Of course, course here they never said it's like hey we're done they're, they're, we're never going to reprint the first chapter it's not happening they did not say that and guys for everyone out there who's sitting on 300 dollars boxes of japanese pokemon uh if you know what i'm talking about there those boxes i just picked up a, a bunch of them for 60 bucks 
So the reprints do happen. Everyone out there who's so sure, uh, and he's, so many people were so sure about the Japanese Pokemon, um, I would be cautious is, if what, is what I would say. And of course, if if we it sits like this and I have to bite the bullet, I'm not going to be buying a ton. I'll just buy a couple and if, uh, have to learn from my mistakes that, you know, if there's a product that you love and a product that you, uh, you know, like, you don't want to wait like I did. But, you know, it's a mixed thing. It, it, it's kind of timing and uh, you have to like uh juggle a lot of things and you know what i'm super happy if i don't get it that i can get my boxes of uh rise of the floodborne and rise uh, into the ink lands and uh, the new ursula set looks uh, the return of ursula looks awesome so i'm super excited about that so it's funny, my videos about Lorcana, everything I think about Lorcana, I'm just completely wrong. My guesses on which enchanteds are going to be top, uh, when we're going to get reprints, uh, all of that. And it's funny because uh, I've actually seen people reference my reprint video as to whether they think we're going to get reprints or not. And I'm just communicating what I was communicated to by the company. So here we are, and I'm giving you the further information that I've received here. Anyways, so that's it from me. I want to say thank you to my patrons. Thank you. To, oh, and uh, I released a patron video i'll be releasing another patron video today because i got some feedback from dave's card warehouse telling me that there's not enough cards in my patreon videos so um, uh, i'll be doing that uh, today anyways uh so thank you to my subscribers and thank you for just watching me be an idiot here i always uh enjoy that and have a lot of fun so anyways i hope you all have a great day and i'll talk to you later okay bye bye Governor Jesse Ventura, to send you, Devin, a little bit of a message, my friend. You need to quit slacking. You, I heard lately, have been skipping your workouts. What's going on, my man? You want to turn into a little fat porker? <laughs> <laughs>